Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel. We continue our discussion from where we left off in the previous video. In the previous video, we discussed something about photo ionization. This is what we had discussed. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you've not watched the video, the link is in the description. Now a little bit of a numerical sort of examples uh, that uh, you could expect, you know, uh, so let us talk about it. I did not remove it because it was just in the continuation of this. So let's suppose we talk about it. So uh, 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 an ultraviolet photon having a wavelength of 50 nanometers is allowed on insulation. So an ultraviolet photon having a wavelength of 50 nanometer is allowed on an insulation having an ionization potential of 2.08 electron volt. Calculate the number of electrons that can be formed. Calculate the number of electrons that can be formed and the initial velocity of the liberated electron. Calculate number A, the number of electrons that can be formed and number B, the initial velocity of the liberated electrons. So, I gave you the formula is 1, 2, 4, 3 upon lambda directly. This is in nanometer. Just put it straight away over here. So E is equal to 1, 2, 4, 3 upon lambda, which is 50 nanometer. This would give you your energy of your photon. And how much is this? This is an 11 point. Uh, this is 24.86. 24.86. This is the total energy that your photon has got. Now, one electron requires 2.08 electron volt. So, how many number of electrons? So, the number of electrons would be what? That would be the total amount of energy which is 24.86 and divided by what? Divided by the ionization potential of each which is 2.08. This comes out to be 11.53. 11.53 now you don't have something like a 0.53 electron 0.83 electron 0.23 electron forget about the rules of rounding off over here just take the whole number so the number of electrons emitted are what 11 electrons you have got now now they would be emitted with some initial velocity so how much of an initial velocity so they will take the difference of the energy they will take the difference of the energy and what is the difference of the energy so the difference of energy is the energy that you had energy that you had minus n times the number of electrons times the electron volts or the ionization potential which means that you had a total of 24.86 of an electron volts and minus you freed 11 electrons each having a 2.08 potential this comes out to be what please do it 11 multiply 2.08 this is 22.88 24.86 minus 22.88 this means that the energy difference comes out to be 1.98 1.98 electron volt now this is the difference of energy now each electron will take a share each electron will take a share so which means that this energy has to be distributed among all the 11 electrons so which means energy of each electron energy of each electron would be what 1.98 divided by 11 so do this please divide it by 11 this comes out to be 0 0.18 0 0.18 electron volt or multiply it by a factor of 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 to get it in joules so this would be 2.88 into 10 to the power negative 20 joules 
fine yes so this you have got it in joules now this is the kinetic energy so from this you can now find out the velocity so as kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared so you can find out v by doing it by what energy multiplied with 2 divided by the mass of electron and hold under the root so 2 multiplied with 2.88 into 10 to the power minus 20 and divided by the mass of the electron which is what which is 9.1 in 10 power negative 31 kg so this comes out to be what please do the calculation the velocity of the electron is is is, is mostly represented by a ue so this is 2515.88 point something 2515.88 point something so i will write it as 0 0.25 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second this is what a question can look like you know a small numerical example can look like that a photon is coming the wavelength is given the ionization potential is given how many electrons will it generate or, or eject or emit and then how much of initial velocity will that have so the the number of electrons you provide by finding the total energy divided by the ionization potential then you find the energy difference of the total energy and that of the energy that you have spent in ionizing electrons is this much total energy is this much the energy left with you is this much now this energy difference the left energy has to be divided with the uh, among the ejected electrons so now each electron energy you get convert it into joules and then from the kinetic energy formula you find out the velocity of the ejected electrons fine yes if I say the calculate the wavelength of an incident photon required to cause photoionization of a gas with an ionization potential of 1.9 electron volts. So let's say the lambda, the wavelength is unknown to cause ionization of a gas whose ionization potential is 1.9 electron volt right yes so 1.9 electron volt yes so the formula you have it you have the formula or let's say e is equal to uh, h c by lambda what is the formula e is equal to the energy is equal to h c by lambda you have to find out uh, your lambda so lambda would be h c upon e you've got the value of h you've got the value of c what is the value of h i have written it somewhere over here 6.63 into 10 to the power negative 34 you've got the value of c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by the value of e is 1.9 electron volt you will get the value of your wavelength that is lambda and this is equal to 654 nanometer 654 nanometer which is something about red color 6.454 10 power minus 7 or 654 nanometer right yes if i write another example in a photoelectric process with the light of a certain frequency it is observed that a reverse potential difference of 1.25 volts is required so uh, i will write over here that the voltage of 1.25 volts is required to reduce the photoelectric current to zero find the minimum kinetic energy and the maximum speed of the emitted photoelectrons so the kinetic energy is unknown and then the maximum speed let's suppose i write it as v is unknown or ue is unknown so kinetic energy they find it from where kinetic energy is in the form of electron volts so electron volt you directly put the charge of an electron is 1.6 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs voltage is 1.25 you get it directly is what and so they have converted it into joules as well so 2 into uh, 2 into 10 to the power negative 19 joules this is 2 into 10 to the power negative 19 joules and in the similar way you find the velocity or the, they name it as ue for the velocity of electron so this is two times the kinetic energy and divided by the mass of an electron and hole under the root and the velocity comes out to be how much 6.63 into 10 to the power 5 
meter per second over here you can also have a 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second the standard scientific notation is that in which you have one non-zero digit to the left of it so i will write it in standard uh, scientific notation 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second uh, do I have any other example? The band energy gap, the band gap energy between the valence band and the conduction band of a certain dielectric is 3.3 electron volts. 3.3 electron volt is the band energy between what? Valence band to conduction band. I named it as E. Right? Yes. What do it say? Find the voltage required to transport 10 to the power 12 electrons to the conduction band. The voltage required is unknown if 10 to the power 12 electrons are transferred. So, this energy is equal to what? Energy is equal to n times electron volts. I told you the ionization potential would be what? The energy, the energy is equal to n times the electron volts, right? Yes. So, which means n is what? n is the number of number of electrons. E is the charge, and V is the voltage, and E is the energy. So, the energy over here is. Hmm, wait a minute. Voltage is unknown. Yes. So, voltage is unknown over here. So, for voltage, what can you do is for voltage you have E divided by n times E. E is given which is 3.3 .3 electron volts and divided by uh, uh, n so n is 10 to the power 12 is given and multiplied by E which is the charge of an electron so this means the required voltage would come out to be how much required voltage would come out to be uh, 20.6 megavolts 20.6 megavolts of an electron of, of, of voltage is required to give you 10 to the power 12 free electrons shifted from the conduction to uh, the from the valence band to the conduction band right yes so I believe this much is enough the main question is this one all of them uh, E is equal to H C upon lambda gives you the energy in joules to convert it into uh, electron volts, you divide the joules energy by 1.6 10 power minus 19. To find it directly in terms of electron volts, your wavelength should be in nanometers. 1 to 4, 3 by lambda gives you the energy directly in terms of electron volts. Right? Yes. Now, with each insulation, we will discuss what? We will discuss a mechanism of failure. Uh, a human being also becomes sick, he becomes ill, he goes to the doctor, so the doctor first know, wants to know the root cause. What is the cause? He will not give you directly the medicine, right? He will first want to know the cause. Like this, of an insulation fellow over here will first want to know the, the root cause of it. And what is that root cause? So we'll understand the whole mechanism of breakdown. How an insulation breaks down? Breakdown is what? The, the, the finishing of the dielectric properties and the insulator becomes a conductor. So with each insulation, we'll see three important things. Number first is the selection. Number two is design. And number three is application. So selection is what? That out of the liquid, solid and gas, which one, have you, which one you have to select? So that depends on the application. Again, design, how will you design that particular insulation? So for instance, you apply the tape insulation and you say just, just, just apply more and more so that more and more doesn't work actually. We've got a problem with that, we'll see it in the solid dielectrics. And then the application, so is application, the first two depend on the application again. So we'll see all the gas, solid and liquid insulations in a great detail. So the next uh, form of ionizations or the uh, various energy sources I talked about that we could remove an electron from the valence shell and shift it to the conduction. So we'll see that as well. But uh, let's say we, in the, we go in the sequence and in the flow, we talk about the gas insulation in the next video so that the next processes also come over there. The electric field calculations, we'll see it later then. But one question. One question to end the question with, uh, to end the lecture with is, uh, is water a conductor or an insulator? 
water is a conductor or an insulator so the answer to this let me know in the comment section we'll discuss it in the next video and most probably we will start with the gas insulations in the next video till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye